Hey there everybody, welcome to Auto Bears and this is the new Subaru Outback. If you were to ask the general public what they knew about Subaru, you'd probably get two distinctive responses. The first being that they had big SUVs that were very old school, permanent four wheel drive and very reliable. And then on the flip side, you get taken back to a time of Subaru Impreza's, WRX STI's and World Rally Championships. Now for 2022, we're very much looking at the former rather than the latter statement because in the UK, Subaru are down to just four models. They've ditched the Impreza and the Lavorg and we now have the XV, the top of the range Forester, the all new and all electric Solterra coming in summer 2022 and this, the Subaru Outback, which is technically the old school model of the range and I'll let you know why later on in the video. But I've had this new Outback for a week and I'm gonna let you know, well, if it's still a very good off-roading 4x4 SUV slash estate. Now when it comes to the Outback styling, I actually really like it. Now granted it looks like a traditional Subaru, a little bit sharper than its predecessor, but it looks really purposeful, it actually looks like it's designed to go off-road, and in this autumnal green, it just suits this country environment perfectly. It just fits right in. Now also, this has got a bit of a raised ride height. It's actually got a 213 millimeter ride height, which means that even though Subaru UK class this as an estate car on their website, it's only a few millimeters shorter than a Skoda Kodiak SUV, and that's a seven seater. So that lets you know that this Outback is A, a big car, but B, designed to tackle the rough stuff. But let me know what you think of the Outback styling in the comments section below. Do you think it looks really nice and handsome or perhaps a little too old school for the modern times? But do let me know. But I really do like what they've done with this new Outback. And if you want a sporty version of this car, you can go for the field. We get lots of black packs added to the car as standard. But this top of the range touring, I think looks just right. And on that note, I think that's enough of looking at the outside of this Outback. Let's have a little look at that interior. Sat in the front of the new Outback, you are greeted by a very spacious, very comfortable and well screwed together interior. This is actually a really lovely place to be on a long journey. Now, as I mentioned, even though this is an estate car, we have got a raised ride height, so we, therefore we have a raised seating position. So getting in and out of the Outback is actually really easy. So if you are after a rugged estate car, which happens to be close to an SUV, then this is definitely one to look at. Now, once you get sat in the driver's seat, you find that these seats are very comfortable. And on this top of the range touring, they are Nappa leather and they are very sumptuous and they do hold a big bear like me in place. Now we have got electric adjustment in the seat as well as for the front passenger. However, the front passenger doesn't have lumbar support. And then we've got the steering, which has both rake and reach adjustments. So getting the perfect driving position is easy. Now, one thing I will mention is, yes, we get a lot of cars where you get your memory settings so you can set the seat how you want it, press a button and it will adjust. However, in this Outback, we actually have some sensors here in the top of the dash that actually read your face. And you can actually have several profiles set up. So once you sat in the driver's seat and it reads who you are, it will adjust the seats and the mirrors to how you want it. That's a really clever feature and I really do like it. And I love the little greeting it gives me every time I get into the car. So when it comes to kind of initially sitting in the new Outback, it's actually a really pleasant place to be. Interior quality in the Outback is actually really good in here, but there is quite a lot of materials on display. So we've got soft touch plastic here on top of the dash. We've got leather trim on the dash as well, along with piano black plastic and actually quite a durable rubber here on this little shelf. We've also got soft touch plastic here on top of the dash. We've also got it here on top of the doors and leather on the door panel. And we also got it on the armrest. And actually, as I said, because this is the top of the range touring, we've got Nappa leather for the seats. We've even got leather here on the side of the center console, but on my side, it is quite cheap and nasty plastic. But on the other side for the passenger, we've actually got a little cubby space to perhaps put your mobile phone, and that feels a bit more durable. But other than that, it's, yeah, really well screwed together. We've got a bit more piano black here on the center console and here as well on the dashboard. But yeah, it's actually a really nice place to be, and it is really well screwed together. 
Cubby spaces are actually really good in the outback as well. We've got some very decent sized door bins, although they're not lined with any fabric, so loose items will rattle around a bit, but you can get a medium sized bottle of drink in there. Now on the centre console, ahead of the gear lever, we have got a little space which is lined with rubber, which is perfect for putting your mobile phone, but it's not completely flush. It kind of curves away as you go further down, so it is a little bit awkward when you put your phone in there. Then just behind the gear lever, we have got a couple of cup holders and they are really deep and again rubber lined. So the only thing I'll say is if you have like a small bottle of drink, it is going to wobble around in there. But if you get yourself a large coffee from Starbucks or Costa, it will sit in there nicely. And it doesn't get in the way of the gear lever, even though it's CVT only. Then just behind there, we have got your center armrest, which you can actually open up for a couple of little cubby spaces. So the first one presents you with this little tray, which is perfect for putting your wallet on. But if I open the other side of it, we actually unveil quite a nice decent amount of space. And again, actually, it's cloth lined as well, so loose items won't rattle around in there. So that is really handy. Now the glove box, oh, that's one negative I will say, is that the rubber does rub against the armrest in here. Now when we get to the glove box, it is actually of a decent size. However, Subaru have to now take the crown for the largest book pack you can get in a car. I mean, that now puts Hyundai Group to shame. But if you take that out, you actually have quite a decent sized glove box. It is lined with fabric as well, so loose items won't rattle around in there. So that's really handy, but it does mean you've got to take the book pack out. And as I mentioned, there is a little kind of shelf here which is rubber lined, perfect for perhaps some loose change or your keys, which is actually nice and handy. And then finally, we've got a little space to put your sunglasses. So all in all, when it comes to the kind of cubby spaces here in the Outback, it is really handy, but I just like this little phone tray area just to be kind of thought out a little bit better for when the facelift comes out. Definitely want to look at some, perhaps some uh, wireless charging. So you can put your phone in there and it will charge wirelessly, but it's also out of the way as well. Now, just above there, we have got two USB charging inputs as well as an aux in socket, which is actually the first time I've seen one of those in quite a while, but that's actually nice and handy there as well. So it does mean when you've got your cable plugged in, it is kind of slightly tucked out of the way. But yeah, when it comes to the cubby spaces, it is pretty good in here. Now, although this Outback is kind of an old school car, I mean, we've got a big petrol engine under the bonnet, it's actually quite surprising to see how fewer buttons there are on the centre console. And that's because Subaru have gone the way of some of the other manufacturers where a lot of the controls are operated via a central touchscreen. And what we have is an 11.6 inch touchscreen which is set up in a portrait mode, kind of like Volvo. And for the most part, it's absolutely fine. Now, it's not the quickest system out there. It's a little bit laggy in some of its responses, but it is clear to read. The menus are nicely laid out. You've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And in terms of things like climate control, so for example, we've got physical heater buttons on the sides of the screen there, which I really do like. Lovely and easy when you're on the move. And then when it comes to operating like the fans in the direction, what I find myself doing is kind of resting my hand just on the bottom here and then just being able to go around and operate the menus. So it's actually quite intuitive having this little kind of shelving bit here, even though it's more for a design kind of aesthetic. And then in the center part of the display is your main display area. So you have things like your Apple CarPlay, you have your sat nav or your main menus and settings there as well. So that is really handy. And then at the top, we have this kind of four headline area. So one of them is choosing your X mode if you want to go off road. So you can choose things like mud and snow or deep mud and snow or deep mud and deep snow. We then have something that lets you know about your miles per gallon, your pitch angle as well, if you decide to go off road, as well as your uh, percentage of the pressing of the accelerator pedal. And then we have a couple of extra little headline areas. One of them just tells you where you are via the sat nav and the other one lets you know what music is playing if you're using the media system. So as a kind of first time using this system, it is a little bit fiddly, but it is nicely laid out. And once you kind of get used to it and have used it a few times, you'll be absolutely fine with it. And you have got things like heated seats as well on this trim level. So that's actually really handy. And then when it comes to being in front of the steering wheel, we've got a traditional analog display. We've got your rev counter on the left, speedometer on the right, and a little bit of uh, information displayed in a digital display in the center. It is very old school, but it's very easy to read and very easy to go through the menu system using the buttons on the steering wheel. 
Now, speaking of the steering wheel, on the left-hand side, we've got your media and communication controls. Underneath there, we've got your driver data controls. And then on the right-hand side, we've got your adaptive cruise control. And then we've got a couple of buttons, one for the speed limiter, your sport and intelligent drive mode, and underneath there, your heated steering wheel. So that's actually really handy because it is kind of the one area on the interior where you get a plethora of buttons when it's actually quite sparse here on the center console. But yeah, that actual infotainment system is not too bad. The driver data display, again, old school, but very clear and easy to read. It just feels perfect for the environment that I'm kind of driving around in, in the country. But yeah, it's actually really nicely laid out. But as I said, there are better systems out there and it'll be interesting to see how Subaru kind of tweak it as the model range moves on. Now, speaking of the rest of the physical buttons here in the cabin, we have on the center console got your electric handbrake. We have got a button here for your reversing camera. As I mentioned, we got your heater controls. We also got your front and rear demister along with the wing mirrors. And then on the right hand side, we got a button to open the boot. And then we got all your buttons for the electric windows, etc. So again, it's very surprising considering that this is an old school car, that there's not that many buttons here on the center console. So if you have been a big Subaru fan for many years, this might be a little bit of a shock to you, but just have the salesman kind of go through everything with you because after a while, yes, you'll find those settings that you'll feel comfortable with and you probably won't change them. But yeah, it can be a little bit of a shock first time you start using it. So all in all, when it comes to kind of the front of the new Subaru Outback, it is a really lovely, comfortable place to be very spacious as well and very well screwed together and kitted out and i think that's enough now sitting here in the front of the new outback let's see what it's like in the back sat in the back of the outback again like the front it's very spacious and very comfortable back here and because of that raised seating position getting in and out of the back of the outback is really easy and yes, it is really comfortable. We still have the Nappa leather seats and we've also got soft touch plastic here on top of the doors and leather on the door panels as well. And then when it comes to space, as I said, it is really good back here. That driver's seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot seven tall and five foot seven wide. And as you can see, I've got a huge amount of knee room and headroom is really good as well because even though we got a sunroof, the roof kind of slopes upwards and backwards, so it means that taller passengers can sit back here, which is really handy. Now, I'd probably recommend maybe two adults for a comfortable journey, three at a push, but you can easily get three kids back here. Now, speaking of kids, when it comes to a fix in a child seat, we've got Isofix supports on the outer seat. And what I love is that we have actually got this leather cover, then once you fold it down, easily exposes the bars there, so it makes it really easy to affix a child seat, which I really do like. Now, cubby spaces are pretty good back here as well. We've got some very decent sized door bins. Again, not lined with any fabric. We've got your aeroplane style pockets on the backs of the front seats. And then we have got your center armrest to show you a couple of extra cup holders. And you can tell how new this car is because um, yeah, the cover has not been taken off. But I really do like the look of those cup holders. Very handy. Now it's not devoid of features either. We have got two outer seats that are heated and controlled by buttons on the rear of the armrest. We've got two USB charging inputs as well. And the windows are of a really big size. They do allow a lot of light in and they do open all the way down. In fact, it does feel very light and airy here in the back of the Outback. The only thing that's a little bit disappointing is that we've got a 60-40 split in the seats. So we've got no through loading into the boot area. But other than that, no, I'm really impressed by the amount of space and kit back here. It's actually very impressive and very comfortable. And finally, we have got this very kind of odd handle kind of integrated here on the side of the seat. But if I pull it, it allows me to recline the seat back, which is really handy. And again, if I am a taller passenger, I can definitely relax back here. And I can also get my feet underneath the driver's seat. Again, very handy. So yeah, sat in the back of the new Outback is really, really good. Very comfortable and very spacious. And on that note, I think it's time we um, check out that boot. Opening the boot on the Outback presents you with 561 litres of space, which is actually really impressive. Now it's a little bit less than the Golf All Track, but it is a bit more than the V60 Cross Country. So it does sit nicely in the middle. 
But once you've got the boot open, you are greeted with a really nice wide square load area. You can easily get a few suitcases in there and a load of weekend bags. And you've got no boot lip to navigate over either, which is actually really handy if you want to load any large bulky items. Now, when it comes to features, there are quite a few of them, and there is one missing that I've already mentioned in regards to through loading into the rear passenger area. But we've got eight tethering hooks, and they actually feel really substantial. We've got a 12 volt socket, which is really handy. And we've also got these little pop-out shopping hooks, which are very handy for keeping your shopping bags in place whilst you're driving home. Now, underneath the boot area, we have got some additional space here. Now this particular car has been fitted with a tow bar, but they have removed it and put in it in this little cubby area. But we've got a bit of extra space here, which is really handy for keeping some perhaps personal items away from the load area. And we've also got a couple of handles here as well, so you can actually get the rear seats completely flat. So again, it's perfect for loading large bulky items. And another thing I really do love is that you can get the tonneau cover underneath the boot floor. So you can stow that away again when loading large bulky items. So yeah, when it comes to the practicality side of the Outback, it is actually really good and really versatile. I am really impressed by it. And I know I've said really four times now. So on that note, I will mention one final feature, which is the fact that with the tonneau cover, you can have it set in place, but you can also lift it upwards so you can get two items underneath and then you just simply pull it down and it's sorted. But yeah, I am really impressed with the boot capacity and the features of the Outback. And on that note, before I say really any more, let's go for a drive. So once you get driving in the Outback, first impressions are really positive. It has got a bit of an old school feel about it, but you kind of know that if you're looking at this car. But it just feels very spacious, very comfortable, and actually very relaxing as well. Now, because this is a raised estate car, which is kind of borderlining an SUV, visibility in one word is excellent. So I've got a brilliant view of the road ahead. The A pillars are really thin and I've not found myself looking around them at any junctions. The wing mirrors are of a really nice size and they help with my blind spot detection. And I have got a blind spot warning here as well. And if I look over my shoulder, I actually see I've got a really thin C pillar and all round visibility is brilliant. Even looking out of the back of the Outback is really good. It just feels very light, very airy and spacious in here and reminds me of the Forester I drove a few years ago. This is definitely a positive trait for the Outback. Now, if you're worried in any way, shape or form that having skinny A pillars and C pillars means that safety has been affected, oh no. This has got a Euro NCAP 5 star safety rating, especially down to its eyesight safety system. But yeah, first impressions of the new Outback really positive indeed i am definitely falling for this off-roader estate slash suv now there are three trim levels to choose from in the outback range you've got the entry level limited the mid-range and sporty looking field and this top of the range touring and i'll be honest Whichever version you go for, you're gonna be happy with because of the standard kit levels are really impressive with the Outback. I would personally go for the Touring because having lived with it now for a week, I love the Napa Lever, I'm loving the Harman Kardon sound system. It's just an absolute joy to listen to on a long journey. And it's just a very lovely and relaxing car, but you don't kind of lose out on anything if you go for any of the lower trim levels. I mean, all cars, Come with 18 inch alloy wheels all cars come with the same ride height come with the same x mode four wheel drive system so really it just comes down to what you want in the car now if it was me yeah i think i would go for the touring i would love to have all the standard kit and i'd be really happy with it the only things i kind of feel as i'm missing having driven the outback for the week is i'd like there to be 360 degree cameras and front parking sensors as standard, you have only got rear parking sensors and a reversing camera. So that's something I'd like to see changed for the facelifted version of the new Outback. But other than that, I've not felt myself kind of wanting or needing for anything. I don't feel like I need a head-up display. I don't feel 
like I need a digital cockpit. You know, I like the kind of old school feel that the Outback has given me. So yeah, when it comes to the trim levels, it's essentially up to you because I don't think you'll be just disappointed either way, but I would go for the Touring. It just looks really lovely and just has all the kit that you would need, including that facial recognition system. I really do love that. I love the way it greets me when I sit in the driver's seat. So when it comes to powering the Outback, there is just one engine available. It's a 2.5 litre four cylinder petrol engine. There's no turbo, but it goes through a CVT gearbox to all four wheels using a symmetrical all wheel drive system that Subaru have become renowned for. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Outback is kind of the old school model in the Subaru range, and that's because it doesn't come with an e-boxer setup. So the Forester and the XV come as mild hybrids, but this doesn't. This is just a pure ICE car, internal combustion engine car. So when it comes to performance, well, it's not gonna be the most inspiring. So I've got 167 brake horsepower, 252 Newton meters of torque. Nought to 62 is taken care of in 10.2 seconds, which as I said, yep, isn't the most impressive, but it's not that type of car. Again, when it comes to things like frugality, it's not the most economical when compared to some of its rivals, particularly those with a diesel engine. But Subaru say I should get around 32.8 miles per gallon on a combined WLTP cycle. And I feel quite proud in the fact that I've actually bettered that. On my commute to work, which is around 52 miles round trip, I'm averaging around 35. So I'm actually really impressed with that, that I'm able to better what Subaru claim. It's just a shame that we haven't got a mild hybrid or even a full hybrid system here in the Outback because that is something I'd love to see Subaru do with their models. Now granted, yes, they have got the Solterra coming out, which is a full EV, but that's its own dedicated model. I'd just like to see the rest of the model lineup just get a few more features to make them a bit more frugal and as a result, a bit more competitive against their rivals. But I've been really impressed with the engine. It isn't the quietest, of course, this being a big petrol engine with a CVT gearbox, if I put my foot down, I do get engine drone coming into the cabin. And as you kind of saw and felt response and speed wasn't exactly a big highlight, but again, it's not that type of car. But the thing with CVT gearboxes, and I've kind of driven a lot of them recently, is if you drive them in a relaxed manner, you will reap the rewards of them. They do calm down, they do settle and become very quiet and refined. And the thing I have found with CVT gearboxes is, there seems to be a quite a nice kind of mid-range acceleration to them whilst you're driving. You just kind of put your foot down and it's just a little bit extra oomph there compared to a DSG where usually you get a split second of hesitation and then it responds. But yeah, I know if you are kind of put off by a CVT, you're not going to be looking at the Subaru. You'll probably be looking at either the Volkswagen or perhaps a Volvo. But if you're out in the country and you've had a Subaru before, you're going to feel right at home with it. And I think you'll enjoy the more quieter side to the Outback rather than kind of the noisy diesel side. So what's the ride refinement and handling like in the Outback? Well, ride-wise, it's actually really impressive. It is very comfortable. It deals with most of the bumps and imperfections really well. And you don't really feel any booms and vibrations coming into the cabin that much. Now, the one thing I will say is because of that ride height and because of the, the suspension, yes, you do feel some of the little niggles at lower speed and the ride can be a little bit unsettled. Something like a Volvo V60 cross country will feel a little bit more planted at lower speed but it's not uncomfortable. It just kind of, you can just feel a few of those little niggles kind of come through, but these seats are so comfortable, they take the sting out of a lot of them, which I really do like. And as I go onto the side here, I'm actually driving half on concrete, half on mud, and it's actually really good. There we go, back on the road. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So I think if you are after something that's going to ride brilliantly then something like a volvo v60 will be the one to go for but you do have to pay for it don't forget even this top spec version of the outback is cheaper than its rivals and then when it comes to refinement for the most part again 
it's actually really good. It does settle down when you're at speed. It does feel a bit more planted as well. There's a little bit of road, uh, road noise, no, wind noise coming off the A pillar and the wing mirror. And you do get a little bit of tire roar coming into the cabin. And as I said, the engine does settle down at speed, but it's one of those that, again, if you put your foot down, it does kind of, yeah, you do get a CVT drone coming into the cabin. But the refinement side of it is absolutely fine. I've done a long journey in the Outback and I was actually really pleasantly surprised with how refined it was. And because I've got that Harman Kardon sound system, that really, again, took a big chunk of the kind of intrusions from the outside, should I say, away from the, uh, from my ears. So I had a lot of nice music playing, but I wasn't able to hear the road. I wasn't able to hear the wind or the engine. So that was really nice and surprising. So what's the handling like with the Outback? Well, this is kind of a weak area for the car because it's not a very sporty car. And because of the fact it's got those off-roading credentials, it's built very much for comfort. So the steering wheel firstly feels really lovely in my hands and I do love the quality of the leather. But if I chuck it into a corner, which I'm going to do now, there's a bit of lean, bit of roll, I do get the impression that in damp conditions it will want to understeer, but it's not a rewarding drive. It's not a sporty car. Don't have any memories of WRX STIs going on in your brain when you're driving this car because you're not gonna get those rewards. Now the steering is actually pretty light. It's a little bit responsive, but again, you just don't have the connection to the front wheels that you would do in say a Seat Ateca. Granted, that's a different car to the Outback, but it's fine for everyday driving. It's nice and light enough, so it's easy to park. And if you do take the Outback off-road, then it's absolutely perfect for that as well. So yeah, the handling is fine for everyday, but just, yeah, don't expect any sporty rewards from it. So what have been some of the highlights and some of the low points I've experienced with the Outback with my time with it this week? Well, highlights have definitely been the comfort levels. It's a very comfortable car, very relaxing. And when you're kind of driving to work, I put the adaptive cruise on, let the car do its thing. And it's been really lovely. Topped off with the Harman Kardon sound system. It's made my daily commute an absolute joy. Now, one of the things I really do love is the safety system on this Outback and it's Subaru's eyesight system, which is actually regarded as one of the best systems fitted to a car and on one occasion it did really help me out because somebody did pull out of a roundabout and i didn't really kind of notice that they were doing it until the last moment but the car had already seen it and actually already applied the brakes so i really do want to thank uh, subaru for putting this safety system in the car that was a really great feature now when it comes to kind of the safety systems and kind of you know the comfort features that we expect to find on these cars one of them is a little bit annoying because you've got to go into the menu system to get it so one of the buttons we've got on the dashboard here is for the electric handbrake and usually with these types of cars you get a button nearby for the auto hold but you don't have that on the outback because you have to go into the menu you then look on the screen and there's one button there that says auto vehicle hold or avh and when i turn that on you get a little light that comes on that says AVH on the dashboard. That's brilliant. However, as soon as you turn the car off and turn it back on again, that system turns off. So again, you've got to go back into the menu system in order to reactivate it, which I think will be a little bit tedious over time. So yeah, that was one thing I found a little bit disappointing on the Outback. And then the next thing I found is that some of these features, as you kind of go through them, are, you know, they're good, but they very quickly disappear. So I got, for example, the heated seat and the climate control on the screen. And after a couple of seconds, it literally just disappears. So whilst I'm kind of thinking what temperature I want to change it to, it's already gone. So you have to kind of go back into it. So again, that's just another thing that I found that Subaru could easily work on and just get it so that it's kind of up there for a few extra seconds, or at least wait until I've picked the heated seat level or the temperature level that I wanted. But other than that, no, I've been really impressed with the Outback. It's got that very old school feel. It's got this lovely, comfortable drive about it. Yes, some of its rivals do ride and 
handle a bit better. But if you're out in the country, the things that you're after is dependability and ruggedness. And that is something out here that you want in your car, especially if you perhaps work on a farm, for example, or you live in an area which is prone to poor weather and maybe a bit of, you know, mud on the road, etc. So that's something I really do love about the Outback is that it has got all that ruggedness that you will need in this type of car. And again, it is much, <laughs> much cheaper than its rivals, which is definitely key for this type of vehicle. So what are my thoughts on the new Subaru Outback? Well, I really do like it. It's got a lot of charm about it. It's got this old school feel about it. And it is a hugely, hugely capable car. Yes, as I've mentioned before, its on-road manners can be beaten by some of its rivals. But the fact is you can turn off a road like I have now, and you can just drive off-road and the car will deal with it. And that's just something I really do love about it. It has this go anywhere ability, which not many rivals have. And they actually, the rivals end up being kind of, you could almost call them specialist kind of rivals because you can get yourself a Volkswagen Golf all track, but it's not a designated car. You know, it starts off as a, as a Golf estate and they then have to make it into this rugged vehicle. The same with the Volvo cross country. I mean, it used to be the XC, 70 but now you can get yourself a standard v60 etc and then you just go for the cross-country version and that's the one thing i love about the outback it's ready to go there's no standard version of an outback to go for which for some people might be a little bit disappointing because you'd be probably driving it on the road 90 percent of the time but this is a car where you really want to use the capabilities that are there for you. You definitely want to make use of that ride height. You want to make use of the 4x4 system and the fact that you've got loads of space for passengers and stuff. And even the price, which undercuts its rivals, is actually really impressive as well. And as I said before, you get an awful lot of car for your money. So yeah, I've been really hugely impressed with the Outback. Now, it's not perfect. As I said, the handling isn't as sharp as some of its rivals, and it does feel a bit too old school, especially when compared to a couple of other Subarus. But I'm able to kind of look past that for most of the most part of this car because it's just got character, it's got old school charm, and it is hugely capable. So yeah, the new Subaru Outback, I really do like it. And if you live out in the country, you definitely need to try one. <laughs>